Following a highly successful year for solar panel installations on South African homes in 2023, the blending of technology with solar energy is changing how we view home efficiency and self-reliance. These advancements and of course the many opportunities they present are something Versify Solar is spearheading through their Versify Home app. To tell us more about this, we're joined by the CEO and co-founder of Versify Solar, Ross Mains Sheard. Ross, a very good morning. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good stuff. Let's talk about uh, the role that the Internet of Things play when it comes to smart homes and energy efficiencies. So in South Africa and the majority of municipalities, you can't yet feed back into the grid. So what we see happening in a traditional kind of solar, residential solar solution anyway, um, is you get this beautiful bell curve of production um, as the as the sun kind of hits noon and then mm. it falls off in the in the afternoon. Yes. But what actually happens in the South African home is once your batteries are full, there's nowhere for that power to go. So you get a big drop off and you get redundancies in your panels. So what we are doing is we're incorporating the Internet of Things by including smart devices in the home to kind of shift loads into the daytime sunlight hours to get the most out of your solar um, system. So what I mean by that is as your batteries are, are tending towards full and it's the middle of the day, we can then turn on your geyser, we can turn on your pool pump. Mm. And we're basically shifting loads into, into the, the daylight hours. How do we deal with those redundancies you just mentioned? Exactly by doing that. So ba okay. basically we, we, we can con con control the home right, uh, in right. a sense. What are your thoughts, uh, you know, following the finance minister's budget speech about the suspension of the tax incentive? It's a bit disappointing, to be honest. Obviously, any incentive that gets taken away is a, is a step backwards. However, um, you know, a year ago this time, we were thrilled that governments are, are, are finally kind of seeing the need to, to incentivize the adoption of the technology. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little bit flawed to begin with, uh, to be honest. It wasn't as inclusive as we would have liked to have seen. However, there is... What do you mean by that? Because it, it only really catered for people who paid cash for their systems and it only incorporated mm. a rebate on the panels themselves. And the, okay. you know, a solar system requires a lot more than just panels. Um, also, in order to get the maximum amount of rebate back, you would have need to have installed about 30 panels. Um, and to install 30 panels in a traditional house, you know, not many houses kind of tick that box, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it was a little bit flawed uh, to begin with, we found. Okay. Now, Ross, how do we quantify the economic contribution of alternative energy solutions amidst the electricity and energy crisis that we find ourselves in? I mean, <laughs> I think a better question is, what is the cost of not doing anything? Um, okay. And one needs to look at, you know, the, the financial results of any retailer, as an example, a pick and pay, uh, a shop right, and the amounts that they are having having to spend on um, alternative power solutions and the consumer effectively bears the cost of that down the line. Mm -hmm. And if load shedding is going to end, well, so says our politicians, uh, then why do we need solar then? Why do we need solar energy? So solar as an energy generator is cheaper than any alternative. So okay. a, a mix of solar plus grid will always be cheaper or in the future will be cheaper than just grid by itself. So the, the, the need for solar is apparent. It's apparent worldwide where load shedding is not a thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, solar is going to be around for a long time to come. Yeah. And the option of rent to own has always been banded about. What are the benefits of such? So I think it just makes it more accessible to more people. So before companies like ourselves were around, the only option you had was to pay cash for these systems. These okay. systems range from 150,000 Rand up, upwards, you know, north of 500,000 Rand. What we have done is we've broken it down into more affordable monthly payments. So you can get solar um, from as little as one triple nine a month. Um, you know, which has obviously opened up the target market hugely um, for, this, for this technology. And how do we make it more affordable so that it is more inclusive and more families uh, do have access to solar energy? You did mention earlier on that uh, as time goes on, it's going to be cheaper and cheaper, but there's no guarantee that we're going to re reach that level. So how do we ensure that everybody is, uh, or rather accesses solar energy? So I think it's, it's the economies of scale. The more it gets adopted, the more people play their part. So government has a big part to play in terms of incentives. Um, yeah. But, you know, the more people adopt this technology, the cheaper the, the price be, uh, becomes. We've already seen solar panels ranging from about six rand a watt a year ago to two rand fifty a watt today. Mm. They, it is plummeting the price and therefore becoming more affordable for more people to adopt the technology. Yeah. And... 
Isn't it a concern that uh, we've seen a spike in the theft of solar panels? It is a concern, obviously. Um, you know, we do live in South Africa. We are trying to combat it um, in certain ways. We've launched a, a first-of-its-kind embedded insurance offering, which we insure our panels for all of our, our subscribers and our, and our customers. However, obviously, it, it, it is a concern in this country when, when things get stolen. Mm -hmm. The irony is if you've got a solar system, your alarm system is always working. So um, we've actually seen that it's actually benefited okay. in terms of you know, keeping security on, keeping cameras on, keeping alarm systems working. And what's the global trend when it comes to solar energy? What are you observing? Massive adoption worldwide. Um, I think massive population growth um, has, has put strain on, on municipal grids around the world. We've okay. seen blackouts in Australia. We've seen them in Germany. We've seen them in America. Um, and the trend of renewable adoption is, is uh, thriving throughout mm, the world. Mm. And installing a solar system is always a very significant decision for most families. So, so what should homeowners take into consideration when embarking? on such a decision, I mean, in terms of their solar provider, financing, insurance, and maintenance? Yeah, I think um, do your research, have a look at reviews, speak to friends and family who've had um, systems installed, um, go and look at Google, go and see the credibility of these companies, um, and yeah, uh, we, we try and package it all together in terms of the maintenance, the insurance, um, the installation, and the ongoing support. Our business model is designed to walk the journey with you. Um, it's a long-term kind of perpetual subscription model. So we ensure that it's working because if it doesn't, you know, we don't have a business. Um, All right, right. Ross, great chatting to you, man. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, so you for having time. me. Cheers. Good stuff. That is CEO and co-founder of Versify Solar, Ross Mainz-Sherd, speaking to us about harnessing solar power for efficient South African homes.